Okay, it looks like everything is rocking and rolling. We are live. Good evening. How are we? Um, I'm just going to do a very brief introduction because I am expecting to have to repeat myself once or twice as uh, some of our friends join us inside the uh, stream. So I'm just getting a few things right here. Um, if you are watching, then please do feel free to comment and um, let me know you're there. I don't know why I can't read the comments on this wall. So let me just test these comments. Testing comment. I'm trying this a little different today. So the comments work in there. But I don't understand why that comment isn't working. Yes, that comment is working. And I can see we've got people watching us. So let me just get to this and who's watching is watching and uh, some people who will be watching the recording. Um, please do uh, feel free to comment uh, if there's anything that I bring up that you uh, want to correct me on or you just want to um, share me some words. Hi Lee, how are you my friend? Uh, nice to see you commenting, thank you. I can see that that's working fine. So let me tell you what I'm doing. Uh, you can see on the screen, the last years, putting the pieces together one trip at a time. Now over the last uh, 12 months or so, I've been doing regular weekly streams on a Tuesday night interviewing some of my friends in and around Birmingham up and down the country and uh, trying to piece together uh, the circumstances around our early partying days. So um, I am expecting to be talking for I don't know however long is necessary uh, usually I have a guest with me and when I've been talking to the guests I've always been hesitant to interrupt too much and and, and share my own stories because uh, I always want to hear what my guests have got to say but tonight I had a space in the diary and coincidentally a good friend of mine sent me um some information that I've been asking him for for a while now, uh, which I will get on to very soon. I can see we've got a few people watching or bouncing in and out. So again, guys, do feel free to just say hello or stick a thumbs up. Let me know you're there. So uh, a bit of backstory. Like pretty much everybody, uh, I would have uh, been into music for as long as I can remember in Birmingham. This would have meant we started off... Uh, school discos into the soul and funk scene blah 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 uh right i'm gonna stop every now and again and say hello to people because i want this to be as interactive as possible because uh you guys are going to help me put this together so it's not going to be a really polished stream and i'm sure you'll forgive me for that so shouts out to andy to hillary and to dan good evening uh, enjoy your dinner bon appetit hi to louise uh i'm glad you're here lou you can help me with your comments uh shouts out to Lyndon. Good evening, sir. Respect to you. Uh, also, hi to Emily. I'm sure you're a bit too young for all of this, Emily, but it's nice to have you along anyway. Is that something on my face there? Is it? What is that on my face? Anyway, um, so yes, let me let me get let me get back to it. I'm not going to bore you with my my own history. I've realised that there's something that I need to do at some point, a little podcast talking about my early days. I've got so many, so many stories, so many fun stories, how I would have got to 1989. So in 1989, I had a different, different sets of friends uh, across Birmingham. Uh, my two core friends my two core sets of friends would have been people where I lived uh, in Erdington, Stockland Green, and a core group of friends from Sutton who I'd known for uh, a good four or five years. Uh, as you can imagine, between the ages of 13 to 18, 19, formative years, you go for a hell of a lot. You've got so many different stories. And... Um, in 1988, stroke 1989, uh, many of us had just learned to uh, drive. We just got a, a driving test. Some of us had got cars, but we were still bussing it in and around Birmingham mostly. Shouts out to Pax. Good evening. Um, and we're all pretty much of the same age on my on my page, right? Uh, we all remember 
so let me take this title off and let me go to some slides I've prepared. Very short slides. Okay, so I didn't really want to do that. So this is uh, something that I didn't want to show. So let me let me stop that and start it again from the beginning. Here we go. So this is 1988, 1989. This photo uh, shared by my good friend Andy Urais, Um and it would have been taken on one of our journeys out and about. I think this is actually in Wrexham. We were going out for a Friday or a Saturday night. Crisp white shirts and uh, our ties. And uh, yeah, that, that wonderful hair. You know, that was what you had to do to get into the clubs back then. So that was what we were doing. Going out and about. Lots of pubs in Sutton Coalfield. Going uptown. You know, as I say, I won't go into the whole history of what, what we've been doing up to this point because the story is pretty much the same for everybody. You know, rites of passage, Sunday nights up Sam Weller's, Kaleidoscope, all them kind of things. So, 1989. You will see here, I've got a list coming up very soon of uh, events that we would have come to. And the list that I've got it has been shared to me by my good friend, Mr. Bradley Hatton. Now this is Brad here on the right hand side of the image, trying to pull someone out of a car, lovingly referred to as the soul bug. That's Andy Urais' beetle, um, given to him by his mum and dad. And the funny story behind this was being one of the older people of the crew, I passed my driving test uh, before Andy. So I was actually put on the insurance for the car. So I was driving this around way before Andy himself was able to drive it. And uh, we made the journey to uh, the Prestatin Soul Weekender. This was the Prestatin Soul Weekender number five. Um, so there's no way really for me to stop going backwards and forwards from the list and the images. So let me just bring up the list of uh, what we used to do. Uh, Louise, you mentioned 49ers. This list is going to put a smile on your face. So the list I've got has been taken from Brad's diary. Uh, like many people, he kept a, a daily diary, a weekly diary. And um, Brad is now living in Australia, where he's been for many years. And when Michelle and I went to visit him, uh, I had a look through his diaries, uh, certain pages, of course. And I said, mate, this is gold dust. You've got to share some of this with me. You've got to photocopy some of these pages or let me do an interview with you. Um, now, unfortunately, and yet very um, understandably, Brad is uh, reluctant to come onto a live stream, as are most of my friends, actually. It's, it's because I'm, I'm used to being in front of a camera. I'm used to talking to a mic. I forget how um, daunting it can be for some people. Which is a shame because we've got so many stories. Um, so Brad yesterday sent me over this list. Check this out. 1989. These are all key moments from the year that um, he's picked out of his diary. So Lou, you're talking about Bad Boy Billy, DJ Dick at 49ers, 88 into 89. Soul Funk and eventually Rave. This is that exact era. So Shades with a smiley face, which isn't an acid smiley face. It's just a, a grin because Shades was your typical local um, suburban night spot where you'd go out on a Friday and a Saturday, a few pints, a few fights, uh, fish and chips, kebab and chips at the end of the night. And then the uh, risky bus ride home, particularly for myself and uh, anyone else uh, with a, a slightly darker shade to their skin. Jumping on the 114 through Falcon Lodge back to wherever it is we were going. It was always the riding the gauntlet. Again, another story for another time. So that was it. Shades. Wimpy as well. That was, Wimpy was in town though, wasn't it? So, top of the list after Shades, we've got Prestatin 5. So, that's March in 1989. So, let me take this off and I'll go back to the slideshow. This is March 1989. <laughs> Myself, I'm not even going to talk about my dress sense. It's always been a bit weird. 
myself in the middle, Baz, and then on the right hand side, Brad. How wet behind the ears were we? Uh, trying to capture images with our click, click, click cameras. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Uh, I think Andy Ure sent me this photo. So thank you to, or, or was it Baz? So thank you to Baz. Thank you to Brad. Thank you to Andy Ure's for giving me these photos. And I'm sure there's many, many photos on the firm that need to um, surface. Again, I don't know what's going on here. Brad with the uh, speakers, the, the Rasta Blaster, as you like to call it. Yeah, tucked in jumper. Don't don't bring it to my attention. Uh, I did have other photographs from like 1988 of with my friends Gary and Lee, but I thought that's a completely different conversation for a completely different time where we'll talk more about my dress sense. So yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Me probably showing off how tall I am and look at me jumping up onto the balcony. Um, and there you go. Here we are in the chalet. On the left, Aid, myself at the back, Mr. Chris West with his back to the camera, Ashley West, Paul Moran. Uh, I'm not actually sure if Morsey was DJing uh, back then. I don't, I don't remember. I'm sure someone would tell me in the comments when they're watching this. Uh, Baz at the back and then Brad on the right hand side. Press that in Soul Weekend at number five. Uh, I can't remember what's next in this list. Again, same one. Gold jewellery that I probably rubbed off my dad. Uh, press that in five passes. And uh, yeah, so I was uh, I was 18, soon to be 19, uh, a few months later. Don't remember this photo. Um, again, I think Baz shared this earlier, or maybe Andy Ure's did. Uh, okay, so Andy Tomo is watching. Uh, Andy, I did mention a few weeks ago, went to school with um, went to school with Morsey, Paul Moran. So he says he didn't start DJing until 1990. So that that wouldn't make sense. Uh, I myself had absolutely zero. Um, idea I was ever going to be a DJ back then I had no intentions had no desires to be a DJ uh, so this is we obviously must have been in a neighbour's chalet uh, okay sheepish I look <laughs> brilliant um, and Brad went to, to uh, school as well Mikey Ward staring at us oh Michelle is watching I didn't realise you were watching good evening my love uh, yes um, on some of these images I am a spitting image uh, on some of these photos I'm a spitting image of Mikey another uh, wicked shot in the chalet but this is actually um, going to be the next Prestatin so you can see the difference this is March 1989 and I'll carry on telling the story. You can you can piece together what I'm saying. So at the very first Southport weekender, um, we were very wet behind the ears. We'd just come from the the you know the the drinking scene, the Friday Saturday nights out down the locals. We were going to sat to Prestatin. I'm going to keep saying Southport. We were going to Prestatin to do the exact same thing to have a great dance, to have to listen to some music. And, um, you know, to just enjoy ourselves. There was the, um, obviously, the summer of 88 into 89 was the whole acid house explosion. The, the you know, the acid house movements around the country. But for me, I can't remember. The guys might tell me differently. And I can tell from these photographs and I can tell from my memories of this first prestatin. We never went full on. We never really immersed ourselves into that acid house scene at this first event. So that would have been March of 1989, as you can see there, as we're dressed. Um, you know, well, let's not even talk about that, shall we? <laughs> so let's skip forward um, to press that in six, which would have been November 1989. And it's a completely different story, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, we're full on ravers at this point. We're full on ravers at this point. So that's November. And the only reason I remember it's November because we always used to have the fireworks on at the Prestatins and at the subsequent Southport Weekenders. Um, I might 
uh, contradict myself now when I go back to this list. So let me take the image slideshow off, go back to this list. Um, so looking down the list, we got Prestatin 5 in March, Mojo at Trezines in April, uh, the Porsche Club and Brad's putting brackets before rave days in May. So um, again, I have memories of going to the Porsche Club, vague memories of being there. Uh, I have vague memories of not feeling very safe at the Porsche Club. Um, Andy Tummo is mentioning Rob J. I've got a photo of Rob Johnson to come up very soon and we will talk about Rob. Dean Lineker, my good friend from Castlevale. How are you, brother? Mentioning the rag market. We will come on to that a little bit later on. I've got uh, a few years on paper here. How are you, mate? It's nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, going back to the list. Porsche Club, May 1989. Still, you know, getting into it. Getting to that. Bearing in mind, at this point, we'd already been into and loving house music for quite a while. You know, 87, 88, 89. We all know the history of the songs that were coming out. But what I've realised is over the months that I've been talking to my guests in the um, wanting to put in my own mind how upfront we were, how in the scene we were, because we were listening to house from the very beginning. My recollection of when we started going out to house parties was a little bit earlier because I'm thinking I'm listening to house in 86 and 87. Yes, I was, but you can see it wasn't really eight, until 89 that we were going to the proper rave do's, as it were. Um, Phil Gifford. Hello, my friend. Phil, hopefully stick around, mate. You can fill in some of these gaps for me like we tried to do on our talk. So let me get back to the list. 49ers, June. Um, Louise, you were talking about uh, 49ers. We used to go to 49ers on a Friday and a Saturday. Uh, I already spoke to uh, Phil at length about 49ers. I already spoke to DJ Dick and um, uh, Lee Fisher, uh, Jock. I also spoke to Adam Regan, you know, uh, legendary nights at 49ers. I also remember being sat in 49ers one evening, looking out of those windows over towards the train station, talking about when we were going to uh, make it to our first rave. And that would have been sometime towards the back end of 89, the back end of the summer of 89. We were planning... Um, and these are all stories that I've wanted to share when I've had my guests on, but I've always wanted to hear what my guests had to say. Um, we were planning a change of clothes. I giggle now because it's so funny and it feels like five minutes ago. We were planning a change of clothes. We were planning, uh, you know, how we were going to get there, who was going to drive back, blah, 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 blah. Just so many amazing memories. But I can remember vividly it was our very first big rave that we were going to go to over in Coventry. And, and you know, a change of clothes. What's going on? So let me get back to the list. So this is Brad's list. Um, I have to say, there's going to be a lot of things on here that I would have been doing that aren't mentioned. There's also going to be things on here that we did that I know aren't mentioned on here, which I'll get to a little bit later on. Um, but so this is just a list that will, you know, jog everyone's memories. Nude at the Hacienda in July. I only went to the Hacienda myself a few times, but looking from this list, Brad went a lot more times than I did. Um, 1001 Base Rave in Brum in July. Um, so that, that brings me back. What happened in 1989, early 1989, um, we were going to the, or was it late 89? See, this, this doesn't all... It all doesn't make sense to me. There's 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 a few gaps because at some point in '89, I went to um, I went to work in Mallorca. I was meant to go and work for the summer. I ended up staying there for two weeks. I came back, um, and then all through that summer we were raving. But that doesn't fall into this timeline in my mind. But it's definitely is what happened. 49ers in August, um, Spectrum rave in Polesworth in September. No idea, I don't remember that. Again, Hacienda, Spectrum in Brum in Digbeth in October. Now, I do remember there was a Spectrum underneath some arches in Digbeth. That could have possibly been that one. Unfortunately, it's the middle of the night in um, 
in Australia, so Brad can't confirm that, but anybody else that can, uh, or anybody else, as I say, watching the recording, please do feel free to comment, because we'll, um, it'll piece everything together, um, Louise is saying where she met Medi and the Kitsons, and the first warehouse rave was September, October 89, and uh, Mark Palfrey, Easy Geezer, he says he's got the original Spectrum flyer from September 1989. So Louise was our, um, our partner, uh, our raving partner. I knew Louise um, via my work friend at the time. Her name is Michelle. We were working together. I was actually with a young lady by the name of Sam back in 1989. And we all used to go out... Um, clubbing together um so that's how i got to know louise uh all friends over from great bar kind of area uh tomo saying the spectrum at polsworth was the first big midlands rave to take place and it was quite close to certain cold fields and uh baz is here yes confirming you saw the photos of baz he's confirming we were going to the soul weekenders in early 89 as you can see on the list baz uh press that in five i've showed the photos already in march we were there um so carrying on down the list press that in six in november so let's go back let's go back to the slideshow this is Prestatin 6 in November. Oh, yes, now I know what you say, Rob Johnson. There's Rob Johnson um, down at the front. I'm not sure if Rob was DJing back then. Again, another incredible uh, music selector. Not as technically uh, adept as um, Paul Moran. I'm fairly certain Rob won't mind me saying that, but a brilliant musical knowledge. Rob Johnson, actually also the guy um, I knew and then I forgot and I was recently reminded, the guy who did the first artworks for the first ever Chuff Chuffs flyers. So that's great. So Brad at the back, uh, Aid in the other white top, Baz looking uh, like the other one out of brass, Rob Johnson, Paul Moran, and then Andy Uray's at the back. I'm not sure what's next. Um, all right, so this is a different rave. I can't even remember where this was that we all went to. Um, Rob Johnson, Steve Warner, Big Steve, and... Um, oh God, my mind's gone blank. Tomo, please. Baz, put me out of my misery. Uh, Chris, little Chris at the front, sorry. Um, I, I've no idea where this rave was, but I know I wasn't with Baz and Brad and the rest of the crew. Other names I should mention, I won't go for everyone, but uh, i got to give a mention to Jamie, who was with us a lot back then. Um, uh, so many of us, but uh, Jamie, I just wanted to give a quick a quick mention to. Chris Barron. Thank you, Baz. I, I did get Chris in there before I forgot um, so that's that rave what's next and then we that so those are the pictures I've got loads more but I didn't want to show them all um, so I'm going to go back to this list so press that in six November so all through the summer of 1989 we were we were fully immersed into the rave scene more of us some of us more than others so to speak um, I was a lot slower in in you know getting balls deep as they say uh but by press that in six in november uh yeah we were all bang on the uh acid house train as they say uh the snapper club at the hummingbird in november uh amnesia rave in coventry in november so i think that was our first big rave that we were planning out of town that we were going to. I don't remember how we got there. I don't remember who drove. I don't remember how we got back. I don't remember anything. But I just do know that Amnesia House at the Sports Connection in Coventry was some of the most fantastic parties I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, shouts out to Mark Hughes. How are you, friend? Um... He's tagging his friend Andy Moll. Hopefully there's some uh, memories here that you wanted to uh, mention him in. The hair's getting longer on the photo. Yeah, my hair was getting longer. I never got a ponytail. I always wanted a ponytail. Louise is saying, late 89, we had a few disappointments as two raves were stopped. Um, the one in Wolverhampton and another where riot police were sent in. Indeed. Yes, Craig Barrow says um 
according to him, we were pissheads at Prestatin 5 and tripping at Prestatin 6, allegedly. That's all I can say. Uh, the Snapper Club was the first when it first started getting weekly as opposed to the ad occasion. And I mentioned uh, a young lady I was with in 1989. She joins us. Good evening, Sam. Thanks for being here. Thank you for uh, helping us join the memories, join the dots in the memory. Um, and what happened to Roland, the estate agent? So, yeah, that's another of our friends. We'll discuss that another time. Uh, OK, so where did I get to on this list? Snapper Club, Hummingbird in November, Amnesia Rave in Coventry, Hummingbird again in November, Adamski at Trezines in December. So Phil Gifford mentioned Trezines, as I'm sure Lee Fisher and Jock did on the talks. Uh, I don't remember being in Trezines at all. I know I was there a hell of a lot. Um, I also don't recall Adamski being there, whether or not I went or not, I'm not sure. I do remember going to see Adamski at the Institute and being really excited to see Seal and then being disappointed that Seal never turned up. But it was a great party anyway with Adamski on stage. And if my memory serves me correct, I think Adamski's warm up were candy flip. So if you were there, maybe you remember that. Don't ask me what the date is. Maybe it might have been the next year. Uh, and then at the very bottom, I think this is the rave that Louise is talking about. Surrealism in Wolverhampton, stopped by the police in December. Alan Cole, another gentleman who needs to get a mention. How are you, my friend? Another of the raving crew. Uh, funny stories, hysterical stories of travelling uh, around with Alan. It was great to catch up with him last year at the Vocal Booth Weekender. And um, I'm just checking out, see if there's anyone else that I haven't mentioned uh if you're just joining us i can see we've got a fair few watching and a few comments thank you guys F please do share this if you think i'm going to mention anyone that might be interested um right okay so let's go to 1990 this is 1990 part one and brad here has put the big one just going to reconfirm very quickly for anyone who's just jumped onto the stream. I'm sharing notes from a friend of ours. Um, he has written down basically bullet points of all the events that we were going to. 88, um, sorry, eight, 1989 and 1990. I've also got further lists, but I'll do a part two of those because I know the football's on tonight uh, and I don't really want to be talking for an hour myself. So I'm racing through this. Um, okay, so 1990 and Brad has put here the big one. The list carries on, so I'm going to read through them. So we've got the Hummingbird in January, Insomnia Rave in Birmingham, January. Don't remember that. Dreamscape London in February. Don't remember that. Bearing in, uh, bearing in mind at this time, I was going to pretty much all of the raves we were all together at this point and then I was also going to raves um with my friends Mavis Junior Tippo um and uh, our good friend Alton who was tragically killed when he um he disturbed a burglar at his house not long after he'd had a baby so that breaks my heart every time I mention it um so those were the those were the the, the crew that I'd mainly be spending times with Okay, I get that out of my head. So, uh, Dreamscape London, Raw in Handsworth in February. 1990, the Freedom to Party protest that was in March in London. Now, I remember reading about this in um, the book I've recently finished from DIY, Dreaming in Yellow, that was... Um, that mentioned about the freedom to party protest. I didn't actually go down to that. Um, I didn't like big crowds, so I never went. Then we moved on to the Hummingbird every week on a Friday night. Um, the Blackburn Rave in March, uh, in brackets, couldn't find it. I didn't go to that. Those guys went. Camden Palace in London in March. Don't remember going there. Starlight in Brum in the March. Raw 2 in the March, Conspiracy in Manchester in the April, and then Prestat in seven in the April. So our friend Angela just um, 
posted photographs of her passes from Prestat in seven. So we were there. Uh, we could have been dancing side by side. Crazy to think how, how long we've all been raving together and yet we wouldn't have known each other. Um, so this is funny now because Sam says 1988, sorry, 1989 into 1990, New Year's Eve rave. Now, I thought 89 into 90 was the New Year's Eve rave at the Aston Villa Leisure Centre, but on this list, it says it's actually 90 into 91, which would make a lot more sense. Um, uh, Gary Langford. Hiya, Gary. He's loving this. His early raving days were at Big Love in Salisbury with Carl Cox Bookham and everything. Salisbury and that part of the country had a very underground rave scene. And there's going to be some books coming out about that. So you have to keep your eyes open. Um geographically Salisbury and Great Yarmouth I know they're not particularly side by side but the same kind of um, you know th that country vibe as they say uh, Brad was on it every week uh, Angela saw me mention her there um, yeah so I got down in the list to press that in seven in April again just to reconfirm bang on it bang on it to say the least in the April um Obviously, we all had full-time jobs uh, by then. I was um, working in town uh, in Birmingham. I had a, a full-time job, doing very well for myself, going out, spending all my money, finishing work, and uh, on a Friday, go and buy a, a whole new outfit, get changed out of my shirt and tie in the toilets at the Hummingbird, raving, um, and rumour had it, people used to buy trays of um, poppers. This is rumour. People used to buy trays of poppers um, and sell the poppers at the event and add like a quid on a bottle so they'd get a free bottle of poppers at the end of it all. That's hearsay. Um, so, Press 97, Kaleidoscope in April, Starlight, May in Small Heath, Time at the Porsche Club in May. Uh, scrolling down the list, uh, I moved the list up, Time at the Porsche Club in May. Unbelievable rave in Small Heath, May. Orbital at Burberry's in May. Raw, May. Snapper Sunday or Dare at the Hummingbird. Um, where did we get to? I'm just reading something at the Hummingbird, 89.90. So I think maybe Rag Market. What year was that? I think the Rag Market was 91. Um, or it might have been 92. We, I mean, you can you can Google it. It's very, very, very well documented, but I forget now. May 91, Palf saying. Uh, I'll get to that the next time I do this. So carrying on down the list, just some more names that I'm sure are going to really uh, resonate with people. Snapper Sunday or Daya. Uh, NWA at the Hummingbird in May. So that goes to show you, you've, you've got NWA of all people at the Hummingbird and, you know, the following. And also as well, Something that I will focus on a lot more when I start telling my my history. I There's no mention on here about going to the Dome. I used to go to the Dome a hell of a lot. And I remember one week, and I've said this many times on my radio show, one week I'd be at the Dome, you know, in a shirt and tie, listening to Bross or Taylor Dane or something like that. And then I distinctly remember another week being at the Dome and... um looking at the lights and like being amazed by the lasers again piece the jigsaw put the piece of the jigsaw together it, you know you don't need to be a uh, pyro to, to understand what i'm saying there so you know that was all interspersed we were going to soul and funk parties hip-hop parties everything was together um starlight bouncy castle yes that's right um i remember michelle telling the funny story about her then boyfriend neil going off and getting lost on the bouncy castle at the Hummingbird. Um, on the Starlight, NWA, 808, Massive Night. Okay, so you're ahead of me there, Lou. That's fine. Hummingbird, Primal Scream as well. Yeah, we were into everything. Um, Andy Tomo, he was into all the baggy and the Manchester stuff. I I wasn't. And we've, we've had the conversation before as well that when the raves first began... We started off in our shirts and ties. Then we started to wear, you know, the T-shirts and the baggy clothes. There was a very short period. Not everybody. I put my hands up. I was a full-on acid Ted for about two weeks. Uh, hoodie, smiley top, bum bag, one red leg, one blue leg. I've got photographs of me like that 
it happened. What can I say? Uh, it wasn't long after that then that that all went and I was busting out the 501s, the kicker boots and the uh, the smart sweatshirts and the, the cool jackets. Uh, but still, you know, Gok one, I am not. So let me carry on down the list. Um, yeah, Kevin Casey. Good evening, sir. Talking about the Lazy Show. Fantastic. At, at some point, many years later, I would get to DJ at the Dome. That that was one of the highlights of my career. So let's carry on down the list. Guru Josh at the Hummingbird. Spectrum at the Hummingbird. Amnesia Coventry. Ozone in Birmingham. 808 State at the Bird. Amnesia. Back to Basics in Nottingham. Amnesia Coventry. Spectrum all day again in July. The Ozone all day at the Hummingbird in July. Depth at the Dome, Derek May, Nexus 21. I've heard talk about that, excuse me. I've heard talk about that and I've read about that recently, but I've got no recollection of it whatsoever. It's incredible just how much of this is just all a blur. And yet I was pretty much at all of these. Uh, Dance Factory at the Institute, Amnesia Coventry, <coughs> Rain Dance in London in August. <coughs> yes. Yes, Louise, she's got the uh, she's got the outfit down. Kicker boots and Timberlands, a chippy top, naff naff sweatshirts. Hi Susan, nice to have you here. Um right, okay, so that was nineteen ninety part one. I take that off. Let's go to nineteen ninety part two. Now in the summer of nineteen ninety I I spoke to you about uh my partner I was with at the time, Sam, we actually rented a house and we moved into a house in Aston and uh, it rapidly became the place to be for uh, after the raves and we didn't even used to go out some nights and we would just stay in all night and that's going to be uh, referenced now on this list. Uh, not that list, that's the same list you swat. 1999, 1990 continued. Uh, so syndrome at Stoke. Now that's August 1990. I've said not everything on here is mentioned. There's no mention on these lists, as far as I can see, of Shelley's. So uh, at some point we were going to Shelley's. My friend Bud was DJing at Shelley's. Uh, Steve Warner was DJing at Shelley's. Um, Martin Red has been mentioned in the past when I was talking to Bud. He was at Shelley's before Sasha took over. Well, they were warming up for Sasha again. We went quite a few times. I got no recollection of it. I know I went, but I don't remember it. And um, some some people will be able to tell us again if I really wanted to. I could find out and, and put the dates together. Just reading the uh, more comments here. Loved the dome in the nineties. Yes, I was still going to the dome in the nineties, and we were going to the Ritzy as well. Uh, couldn't get into rain dance, so ended up at the junk at the dungeons. Yeah, was I with you? that night or was that the night that you all went on your own i can't remember i think you you guys all went on your own and you had some mad stories about what went on right uh, that would have been that would have been later i think naf naf pax is saying it reminds me of tons your ton gear yes all of them and then obviously if we're going to talk about fashion you roll back and uh I, anyway no i won't get into all of that so let's carry on down this list time at the Institute in August, Time was a, a huge Birmingham um, organisation. Shouts out to everyone behind that. Amnesia Coventry, Starlight, Aldea at the Hansworth Leisure Centre. Perception in Oxford in the September. Expression in Leicester in the September. Rain Dance, London, September. Time Out in Nottingham, September. Frankie Bones was a highlight for Amnesia. So we were at Amnesia a hell of a lot. Um, Eclipse Coventry in October, Starlight Brum in November, uh, Life at the Hummingbird in November, Eclipse Coventry in November, and then here it says Tripping at Yours in November. So that would have been a night that we all would have stayed in. Sam was working, I think she was working at, at uh, Bobby Brown's or somewhere on Broad Street anyway, and all the lads had come around the house. And uh, that was when Paul Moran had started DJing. He'd put tapes together specifically for our night in. I've shared some of the tapes already on some of my shows. Steve Warner would have tapes. Uh, Rob Johnson would have tapes occasionally. But it was mainly all about Steve Warner tapes, Paul Moran tapes. We'd be at my house, um, Kestrel Super, Tenant Super, 
and the rest of the paraphernalia on a, on a, on a night through to the early hours of the Sunday morning. Quadrant Park in the November time at the Institute in the November. Electribe 101 at the NEC. I didn't go to that. I don't know why I would have loved to. That was in the November. And then on the, the list towards the bottom, it says R20 gas night at yours. So uh, I'll tell you this story as quickly as I can. Um, so I'm in the house. We're in the house. Michelle's boyfriend, Neil, uh, was an aircon engineer. And for some strange reason, it's the middle of the night. Snow on the ground outside, freezing cold night, snow everywhere, thick snow and uh, Christmas tree up. We had all these stupid toys, a little ghost. Remember the ghost Baz that made the noise? Uh, and uh, we had a dog as well that we were, we were messing around with. There's probably about 15 of us in this house. We've all been there. We all know the, the sights of an afters, right? Um, well, this wasn't even an afters. This was a before, during and afters. At some point in the night, Neil, Michelle's boyfriend at the time, said, I've got some gas in the car. Uh, shall, shall, it's like dry ice. Should we let it off in the house? <laughs> so we're all like, yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it. So he goes out to the van, comes into the house, lets off, lets off this, what was like dry ice in a really small, in a really small environment. So we're all there jumping up and down on the sofa, music's blaring, you know, just like absolutely off it, going crazy. And then all of a sudden, we all start to really freak out. The fumes really affected us really badly. We kicked the door open. I can, there's scenes of everyone spilling out the front door, the back door, rolling around in the garden, choking. And then someone said, oh my God, no, um, my lungs, my lungs are filling up. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Somebody else said, "Don't anybody light a cigarette." I've heard about that. If you light a cigarette, that the whole house is going to explode. So you've got the the effects of the gas, the effects of everything else we've been doing all night. Uh, freezing cold, rolling around on the grass in the snow. It was one of those evenings that I can't even do justice. A legendary, legendary night that will go down in history amongst all of us. And uh, I'm so just amazed that we've got it there documented that it was December 1990. Uh, I was 20 years of age, younger than my son is now. God, mad to think. The Marcus Garvey Centre in Nottingham in December. Now, I would assume that's one of the DIY events, Bounce, um, because, as I say, I've just read their book and they talk about their first all-nighter that they did at the Marcus Garvey Centre. If, if you've not read that book, Dreaming in Yellow, the uh, DIY story, I highly recommend it because it tells a lot about Nottingham and, and them travelling around the country and the, the free rave scene that we would then start to go on to um in the end of 90 beginning of 1991 and then the big one which really surprised me um time out new year's eve at the aston villa leisure center i don't know why somewhere in the back of my mind i always had the notion that that party was 1989 going into 1990 a big um, a big deal about us going into a new decade. Obviously, I got it wrong. I don't know how. I, I specifically remember the, the tune at midnight, as everybody else that was there will remember. It was Gino Latino Welcome. And uh, Brad even confirmed that to me on WhatsApp because I was saying, are you sure this is the same event? And he said, yeah, when he mentioned Gino Latino, I knew we were talking about I knew we were talking about the same party. And it would make sense as well because then we would have left that rave and we would have gone, we would have walked half a kilometre to to our house that was around the corner. Um, yeah, Michelle says, welcome at midnight. We were all together. Time out was 1991 and Sasha dropped it. I was there too. Steve Connolly confirms what I was saying. I didn't, I didn't realise it was Sasha. I, I don't remember who it was, but it was definitely Gino Latino. Welcome. I remember it specifically. So <clears throat> that's that 90. So we had 89 and then we had two lists of 1990. Uh, Louise says it was a great night. 
incredible memories, fantastic memories. And we look back just in that short space of time in that over the, the course of those two years, we went from wet behind the ear, um, ravers who didn't really, you know, the same as everybody. We would, you know, literally on the same, on the same timeline as everybody else you read back now the comments people talking about 88 and 89 and everything that was going on but <clears throat> we were you know i'd like to think our fingers were were on the pulse um with everything that was going on we were following the raves around and what i'm reminded about as well is that in these in these early days we weren't it was later then that the raves started to get bigger and you were moving then into sort of like the white glove territory and the glow sticks and the whistles and things like that. The early raves, it was really none of that, as I'm telling everybody everything they already know. But it's only when you actually piece it all together and you watch videos that it all makes sense. Um, and the other thing that I'm sure we all remember is, um, you know, going out on a Friday night and then getting in late on a Sunday and having to wake up early on a Monday morning or not even sleeping on a Sunday and being at work still on a Monday morning. Um, madness. I've got more lists to share um, that I'm going to save for another time and we'll do this again. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting. Before I do that, um, I'm going to show you a little bit of this. Um, skipping forward. Sutton Coalfield, Sutton Coalfield on a Sunday morning, Louise is saying. So uh, I talk about 1991, where things changed and raves really starting to blow up and uh, it started to get a little bit cheesy. This is a video that I had from, um, I was uh given to me by my good friend gary solomon i'm sure some people have this video already i actually converted it digitally and um i uh it's up on my youtube so if you want to wait or you can watch it beforehand i'm just going to share a little bit of this hold on before i play some of this i just confirm because of the music the stream might get cut dead so i'm just going to share a little bit of it and i'll skip through it and we'll have a, and we'll have a little bit of a chuckle to ourselves but um i'm not going to play a lot of it maybe maybe just a little bit and then i'll skip through it because i'm sure we're going to get the, the stream's going to get cut so i'll do this again guys thank you for being here um so let's let's check this out friday the 12th of july 1991 at the hansworth leisure center You can hear the music, right? Just let me know you can hear the music. Starlight. music playing oh yeah tune mark so, so the music is playing so this is just the intro to the video um setting up the rave i'm going to skip through it and um, what i'll do is when we come back and i'll share more names of other parties that we were going to in 1990 i'll have this on in the background without the music hi bry how are you sir um but let me just show you a little bit of it There's Lenny and Bassman.
I mean, that sound now, what a noise. There's Derek. May God rest his soul. Bass man. Oh, let's have it. Suckling bad boy from Sutton Coalfield. Right, okay, so I'm going to kill that there. So a little teaser for you. That there's 55 minutes of that video that's on my YouTube channel. If you want to watch that beforehand, you can go and check it out, listen to all of the songs. But what I'll do is the next time I do this in a few weeks' time, uh, I'll have that playing in the background and every now and again we'll, we'll listen to it because there's some absolutely hysterical scenes on there. Right, I'm going to cut it. Football's on. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget, if you're watching uh, after I was live, then please do comment because I'd love to... Uh, Feel free to correct me if anything that I've said is wrong or, um, you know, what, if there's anything that you want to add. I think I actually just got cut off as well. Uh, but anyway, the recording will be fine. Thank you, guys. Love you.